Hello there, kids, set us high, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with the first episode of Dragon Age Origins. Now, uh, this is a game series that, like Knights of the Old Republic, I kind of got into ass backwards ish. Um, <laughs> I played the second one in Knights of the Old Republic first, and this one, again, I played the second one in Dragon Age first. Uh, namely because that was what I had available at the time. Uh, I dabbled a little bit in Inquisition, but I realized that I kind of wanted to know how the whole story ties together first before I do all of that. So I decided, why not do an LP of the whole thing? That's a thing I can do, especially since I'm on my own. So let's do it. Now, uh, I have some bits of the DLC, but we'll be playing the main game. Uh, yeah, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say. <laughs> Let's do it. The background you select will determine which of six distant opening stories you play through. It also affects how characters respond to you throughout the game. And so is the Golden City blackened with each, with each step you take in my hall. Marvel at perfection, for it is fleeting. You have brought sin to heaven and doom upon all the world. Canticle of Therenides. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce that. 813. The Chantry teaches us that it is the hubris of men which brought the darkspawn into our world. Mm -hmm. The mages had sought to usurp heaven, but instead they destroyed it. Okay. They were cast out, twisted and cursed by their own corruption. They returned as monsters, the first of the Darkspawn. Okay. They became a blight upon the lands, unstoppable and relentless. The dwarven kingdoms were the first to fall, and from the deep roads, the dark spawn drove at us again and again until finally we neared annihilation. That's kind of impressive. Grey Wardens came. Men and women from every race. Warriors and mages. Barbarians and kings. The Grey Wardens sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness. And prevail. It has been four centuries since that victory, and we have kept our vigil. We have watched and waited for the Darkspawn to return. But those who once called us heroes have forgotten. We are few now, and our warnings have been ignored for too long. Jeez. Oh. I have seen with my own eyes what lies on the horizon. Maker, help us all. Oh. I caught a glimpse of that myself. That looks like a lot of torches. Yeesh. Okay. Alright, so you get 
started at the uh, character gener generation thing here. Um, hmm. I guess you can start from here and then slowly build your way down. Not unlike how uh, World of Warcraft went. So, uh, I understand how that goes. Uh, men and women in Ferelden are generally regarded as equals. Both genders are evenly represented in most organizations, mo noble houses, and military forces. All right, fair enough. A human, the most numerous, yet the most divided of all the races. Only four times have they ever united under a single cause, the last being centuries ago. Religion and the Chantry play a large part in human society. It distinguishes them culturally from elves and dwarves more than anything else. Humans can be warriors, rogues, or mages. All right, fair enough. Plus one strength, plus one dexterity, plus one magic, plus one cunning. So they get kind of all of the stats there from the look of it. Not that I understand too much about it. All right, let's look at elf. Once enslaved by humans, most elves have all but lost their culture. Scrounging an impoverished life, uh, living in the slums of human cities. Only the nomadic Dalish tribes still cling to their traditions, living by the bow and the rule of their old gods, as they roam the ancient forests welcome nowhere else. Elves can be warriors, rogues, or mages. Fair enough. Plus two willpower, plus two magic. Okay, so... Th there are more stats that I'm not aware of. <laughs> How this goes. Uh, it's been... It's all fair, also fair it's been a long time since I've touched this series. So, uh, yeah, there's some things I don't really know. Uh, dwarf. Rigidly bound by caste and tradition, the dwarves have been waging a losing war for generations, trying to protect the last stronghold of their once vast underground empire from the Darkspawn. Dwarves are very tough and have high resistance to all forms of magic, thus preventing them from becoming mages. Plus one strength, dexterity, two constitution, and one, uh, rather, 10% chance to resist hostile magic. Fair enough. I kind of like, <laughs> sorry, I had to yawn a little bit. It's been a long day. Um, I kind of like the look of the human stat bonuses on top of, well, I do identify as human. So, <laughs> it'd be kind of nice. A little boring, for sure, I understand, but still. Um, let's move on. Warrior. Uh, I, this much I didn't really plan out ahead of time. I probably should have. Um, warriors are powerful fighters, focusing on melee and ranged, ranged weapons to deal with their foes. They can withstand and deliver a great deal of punishment and have a strong understanding of tactics and strategy. Specializations for a warrior include a Berserker, Templar, Champion, and a Reaver. Plus four strength, plus three dexterity, plus three constitution. All right, sounds good enough. As dangerous as it is potent, magic is a curse for those lacking the will to wield it. Malevolent... Ugh, my tongue tried to screw it up while I was in mid-stifling a yawn. Ugh. Malevolent spirits wish, that wish to enter the world of the living are drawn to mages like beacons, putting the mage and everyone nearby in constant danger. Because of this, mages lead lives of isolation, locked away from the world they threaten. Specializations include spirit healer, shapeshifter, arcane warrior, and blood mage. That's a term I recognize... And I recognize it as not good. Not good at all. Plus five to magic, plus four to willpower, plus one to cunning. All right. And rogue. Rogues are skilled adventurers who come from all walks of life. All rogues possess some skill in picking locks and spotting traps, making them valuable assets to any party. Tactically, they are not ideal frontline fighters. But if rogues can circle around behind their target, they can backstab to devastating effect. Rogue specializations are Ranger, Bard, Duelist, and Assassin. Plus four dexterity, plus two willpower, plus four cunning. 
Now, in this regard... Ooh, sorry, I had to yawn quite a bit. <laughs> Let me try and get my coffee in me. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, that helped a little. <laughs> uh, in this regard, I believe the style that I want to do is under warrior so uh, we're gonna go with that for now uh, I might figure out later I'm wrong but we'll play it by ear okay human noble oh that's the only path I have okay born to wealth and power second only to royalty you find your training in both diplomacy and battle put to the test as your brother leads the bulk of your family's forces to war in the south. Uh, if you're a human warrior, I guess you only get this path of a background. Alright. Fair enough, I guess. Human noble. Okay. And enter name. Okay. Uh, for name, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you essentially get called Grey Warden the entire game, I assume. Uh, Bioware tends to like their uh, naming conventions, much like Bethesda like that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring back uh, another character from way back. Uh, you might recognize him from the old Skyrim series. That helps if I erase the other half of the name. There we go. And there we go. Awesome. Greetings. All right. So, uh, when it comes to Kusland, hmm, that's a hell of a last name. Uh, let's uh, let's change up that face a little bit. Huh? Let's change up how he looks. Um, skin complexion. A more normal-ish looking face. Skin tone. Yeah, this is not... There we go! I guess. That's, that's as dark as I can do, huh? That's nah, fine. It's fine, I guess. Uh, tattoos. Well, that'd be close. Um, uh, geez. Neighbors stomping around up there quite a bit. Um, now let's go with that. And uh, go. Man, it's hard to tell. That'll work. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Perfect. Okay, so hair. Let's see what options we have for hair. Bald. Okay, that's a good starting point. Uh, not really there. That's close. Uh, and these just get longer as they go. Nah, I think. I think that's about as close as I'm going to get. Okay. And it comes to beard. Ah, oh, it just kind of changes the look of the face a little bit, too. Huh. That's a little weird. All right. Yeah, it just kind of changes how the uh, jaw and neck goes, doesn't it? Look at that. All right. Fair enough, I guess. Um... How would his beard look? I don't know. I guess this is about the closest that I can get. So, all right. Um, hair color, I guess, would be here. Yeah, I think it would be here. All right. Eyebrows. 
Uh, geez. I guess that's the closest. There's not a lot of eyebrow options for men. That's fine, I guess. Stubble. Uh, let's just eliminate that for now so that way I can slowly figure out what I want. Oh, it changes the eyebrows a little bit too. Slightly. Uh, it's hard to tell with the beard. Uh, eyebrow. It's double color. Keep it about the same. It's the hair color. Uh, I'll just eliminate that. Yeah. Looks better. Looks better. Okay. Eyes. Eye shape. This is going to take a while, folks. <laughs> I have never played with this character creator, so I am uh, going to be working on this a little bit. Uh, eye size. I guess that works. Uh, eye color. Uh, where is... Boo! It's not the option I want. Boo. Okay, let's... Yeah, let's go with this. Close enough, I guess. Alright. Uh, brow depth. Uh, oh, I see. There. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, one more. Okay. And the height. Mm, there. Okay. Whoops! Wrong button press. A nose shape. It's a little on the large side. Um, is anything better over here? Yeah, a little actually. This works. This works just fine. Yeah, that works. Uh, let's see if we can get better though. Uh, I guess this works a little bit. All right. No size. Oh, that alters that very well. Okay, cool. Cool. And that works out everywhere else. Uh, neck and eyes. Ear height. Near size. Oh, hold on, bigger side. Neck thickness. Um, Alright, that works. Portrait. Um, look up or down. It... Yeah. I'm not entirely sure how the portrait should look. Uh, let's change the background a bit. Um, sure, that works. I guess. Why not? Um, uh, there we go. That works. That looks better. No, it is gone. How do you do? Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, this is the first time we're putting a canon voice to Tarong. Um, not sure I know what I'm gonna do with that. Greetings. Greetings. Charmed, I'm sure. Um. Greetings. Greetings. How do you do? I guess cocky works. Yeah, that works. Sure. Yeah, cocky is close enough, I guess. Enter name. I just to double check. Yep. I can't change the Kusland one. That sucks. Oh well. Um, go to next. Points to spend. All right. I presume since I'm going warrior, strength would be very nice to have more of. Uh, yeah. Uh, physical prowess and directly affects the damage a character deals in physical combat. It also contributes to the accuracy of melee attacks. High strength is essential for warriors, in particular if they wish to wield two-handed weapons and is nearly as critical for rogues. Fair enough. Measure of agility, reflexes, and balance. Improves a character's chances to hit, making a character more likely to dodge and 
covering blows, and contributes to the damage dealt by piercing weapons like daggers or arrows. Archery and dual weapon styles demand high dexterity to master, making this attribute a favorite for rogues. Uh, let's add one to it. Uh, the character's determination and mental fortitude with high willpower, mages can cast more spells thanks to a deeper mana pool. For warriors and rogues, willpower grants more stamina for combat techniques and special attacks. I guess a couple on that wouldn't hurt. Um, magic is the measure of a character's natural affinity for the arcane. This uh, tribute is crucial for mages since it, in, since it directly increases a character's uh, spell power score, which determines the potency of all spells. The magic attribute also determines how effective potions, poultices, and salves are for all classes. I guess that's good enough. Cunning is how well a character learns and reasons. Most skills, such as herbalism or combat tactics, require a quick mind to master, and an observant eye can more easily find weaknesses in enemy armor. Rogues benefit most from this statistic, as many of their class abilities and special attacks rely on subtlety or reading the target, not raw strength. Fair enough. Constitution represents health and resilience. Higher constitution directly increases the amount of damage a character can take before falling on the battlefield. Uh, let's up that by one, and then up that by one. There we go. Oh! Huh. I can spend a point in skills. This stuff I already have, which is combat training. Uh, completely basic combat training. Warriors and rogues gain access to the first tier weapon talents. Mages can take more damage from an attack before it interrupts their spell casting. And access to second tier weapon talents, as well as a bonus to stamina regeneration. Okay. Good to know. Combat tactics. Um, some of this would not be worthwhile to get into. Uh, some of it. The rest of it might actually be good. Huh. Maybe we should get a passive. Uh, combat tactics can formulate strategies quicker in battle and consequently gains a combat tactics slot. I might be better off getting this, actually. <laughs> All right. Oh, two more points to spend into talents. Dual weapons are... Also, oh, this doesn't have the uh, restrictions. This doesn't have the restrictions on weapons that it does later on. Oh. Oh, why didn't they keep that? Come on! Well, if I had known, I wouldn't be making Stray Cat, but, uh, it's fine. It's fine, I guess. Alright, um... Well, since, uh, Tyrong's mainly a two-handed guy, so we'll, we'll go with that. Ah, oh, man, if I had known! Damn it. Alright. Powerful. Through training and hard work, the warrior has gained greater health and reduced the fatigue penalty for wearing armor. Probably a good idea to get into that. Um, tries to make each attack count, sacrificing attack speed for a bonus to attack, as well as an increased chance to score critical hits for as long as this mode is active. Uh, so that that's an active ability as well. Opposed to passive for these. Um... Might as well go for the two-handed. Oh, I already start with a shield one, huh? Interesting. Let's go for one of the two-handed ones. Um, pommel strike. Instead of going in for the fatal attack an enemy expects... The player strikes out with the weapon's blunt end, knocking the opponent to the ground unless it passes a physical resistance check. One second. Sorry, I had to sneeze my brains out. Okay. So, I guess that's probably a good idea to start with, but if I have the ability to get a stronger attack, I might as well do that. Uh, 
puts extra weight and effort behind a single strike, gaining a bonus to attack. If it hits, the bonus deals critical damage and imposes a penalty to the movement speed unless the target passes a physical resistance check. That's probably a good idea. Okay. A difficulty level of normal. Party is immune to friendly fire. That was a thing? That was a thing that could happen? All right. Casual for <laughs> those who are new. Obviously still immune to friendly fire. Hard is for those ready for a challenge. Friendly fire between members of your party inflicts half damage. Nightmare is full damage. Ooh. Ooh. Let's just keep it on normal. So this is my first time playing this game, and apparently the systems are drastically different than they were for the later games. Which doesn't surprise me too much. Mass Effect had the same thing from the look of it. Like the first game had a drastically different weapon for system. For generations, your family, the Kuzlans, has stewarded the lands of Hyava, earning the loyalty of your people with justice and temperance. Hmm. When your country was occupied by the Orlesian Empire, your father and grandfather served the embattled kings of your land. Today, your elder brother takes up House Kuzlan's banner in service to the crown. Not against the men of Orlais, but against the bestial darkspawn rising in the south. I see. I trust then that your troops will be here shortly. I expect they will start arriving tonight, and we can march tomorrow. I apologize for the delay, my lord. This is entirely my fault. No, no. The appearance of the Darkspawn in the south has us all scrambling, doesn't it? I only received the call from the king a few days ago myself. I'll send my eldest off with my men. You and I will ride tomorrow just like the old days. True. Though we both had less grey in our hair then. And we fought all lesions, not monsters. <laughs> At least the smell will be the same. I'm sorry, Pop, I didn't see you there. How? you remember my son. I see he's grown into a fine young Thank man. Thank you. Pleased to see you again, lad. Uh, and you, Arl Howe. My daughter Delilah asked after you. Oh. Perhaps I should bring her next Maybe. time. Maybe. <laughs> uh, quite a bit younger than I am. Oh, as you get older, those years make less difference. A lesson often hard won. Okay, I that's creepy. be receptive, Hal. My fierce boy has his own mind these days, make a bless his heart. A <laughs> temperament to match his fighting skill. Well done, your lordship. At any rate, Pop, I summoned you for How a reason. Why do you reason. call me a Pop? While your brother and I are both away, Cat, I'm it. leaving you in charge of the castle. Are you certain? What's involved with such a task? Only a token force is remaining here, and you must keep peace in the region. You know what they say about mice when the cat is away. Yes. I get, yeah. There's also I've someone you must meet. Please. Oh. Show Duncan in. Duncan. Duncan. Okay. Oh. It is an honor to be a guest within your hall, Tyrn Coosland. Your lordship, you didn't mention that a Grey Warden would be present. Duncan arrived just recently, unannounced. Is there a problem? Of course not. But a guest of this stature demands certain protocol. I am at a disadvantage. Uh-huh. We rarely have the pleasure of seeing one in person, that's true. Yeah. Pup, Brother Aldous taught you who the Grey Wardens are, I hope. Uh... I'm not sure... Uh what I should go with. I'm assuming I shouldn't be an asshole and choose three and four. <laughs> uh, they defeated the Darkspawn long ago. Not permanently, I fear. Without their warning of the Darkspawn rising now, half the nation could have been overrun before we'd had a chance to react. Ah! Duncan is looking for recruits before joining us and his fellow wardens in the south. I believe he's got his eye on Sir Gilmore. If I might be so bold, I would suggest that your son is also an excellent candidate. Me? Honor though that might be, this is one of my sons we're talking about. Uh, is there a reason I shouldn't join them? You did just finish saying that Grey Wardens are heroes, old friend. I have not so many children that I'll gladly see them all off to battle. Unless you intend to invoke the right of conscription. 
Have no fear. While we need as many good recruits as we can find, I have no intention of forcing the issue. Pup. All right. Can you ensure that Duncan's requests are seen to while I'm gone? Must you keep calling me Pup? Daddy Kins. Okay. Uh, don't strain my abilities or anything. <laughs> and don't strain my patience. Okay. In the meantime, find Fergus and tell him to lead the troops to Ostagar ahead of me. Uh, but I'd like to stay and talk to Don uh, Duncan. He's right there. Kind of want to talk to him. We'll have plenty of time after we're gone. All right. We must discuss the battle plans in the south. Be a good lad and do as I've asked. We'll talk soon. All right. All right. All right. Because Aaron from the parents. I thought I avoided this problem moving out. All right. Uh, don't have a weapon to do that yet. What is B? What is B supposed to be? I talk to them. Good evening, my lord. Good evening. Uh, I guess I should head out the door. And... Oh, that, look at that little mini map. Look at that mini map. It's such a help. Locks and traps. Only rogues can open locks or disarm traps. Their ability is determined by cunning and talent. And I can't open that. Good evening, my lord. Good evening. Okay. Uh, well. Start menu. Rather simplistic. Okay. Um, so, now we're getting into it, and I am lost as all hell. <laughs> as I recall, uh, in the later games, they gave the playable character voice acting, much like Bioware does nowadays. Uh, I guess they didn't go that route with this one. Uh, they continued the uh, Knights of the Old Republic trend that they were doing beforehand, I guess. And then they switched it up in the later series. Um, Mass Effect had a voiced player character as well, but uh, they drastically changed the combat system in the next game. Uh, seems like they also did that here as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure why they would have changed it. It annoys me that you had uh, ability to select a two-weapon fighting style uh, in this game and not the later games without having to commit to the rogue class. Uh, but I guess that was a style decision that they made. I don't know. Uh, what I do know is that uh, I'm intrigued to continue on. So uh, we're going to save the game here for now and end the episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one and the only Stray Cat. Playing games and starting a new adventure in Dragon Age Origins. A game I've never played before. And uh, hoping I don't do too badly in. <laughs> Considering I don't know the mechanics at all. Uh, I know it in the later games, but I don't know this one. And uh, here's hoping I don't fuck it up and piss a lot of people off, which I have a feeling I will for you.